Games usually achieve an atmosphere of horror by carefully scripting your path through a series of unsettling experiences, gradually building tension in the quiet bits before throwing something loud and nasty at you. A bit like a Pixies record, but with marginally more shrieking. But these seven titles just had to be different, didn't they? Not content to give you heart palpitations through jump scares alone, these games have sewn secret additional scares into their very fabric. Hidden content and easter eggs you actually have to go looking for, because some people can't have fun unless they've made absolutely sure their experience is as horrifying as possible. Consider these seven creepiest easter eggs ever found in horror games, unless you're already freaked out, in which case may we offer you this video about heartwarming easter eggs to melt your icy heart. For everyone else though, steal yourself and beware spoilers for the following games. Mascots are disconcerting at the best of times. Hope you're enjoying this sporting event, but just to make sure, here's a person inside a giant anthropomorphic animal with a rictus grin. Let's hear it for the leering animal person. Or else. So it makes a lot of sense that when you take the inherently creepy concept of a masked enforcer of fun and translate it into the world of Silent Hill, you get the stuff of stubbornly repressed childhood memories. Meet unsettling bunny mascot Robbie the Rabbit, who appears throughout the series, debuting in Silent Hill 3's Lakeside Amusement Park. Presumably here he's just catching up on some hard-earned rest after a long day of spreading joy. But let's absolutely not test that theory out, please and thanks. It's in Silent Hill 4 The Room where Robbie really shines though. When you peek into room 320 from the hole in the wall of Henry's apartment, you'll see a Robbie toy sitting on the bed behind your neighbour Eileen. Which fine, Keanu Reeves body pillows hadn't been invented at the time, so you do you Eileen. In a classic bit of horror bait and switch though, the next time you go for a look through your peeping hole, Robbie is pointing directly at you, forcing you to confront the fact that you're both an awful voyeur and a terrible neighbour. Incognito Tabs won't save you now, he knows. He knows everything and he's gonna go and tell Tony the Tiger and Grimace and there's nothing you can do about it. Watch out, the gap in the door. At Gamescom 2014, Hideo Kojima took a brief break from documenting his meals on Twitter to drop a trailer for one of the most exciting horror games of all time. Or to be more accurate, a trailer for a demo of one of the most exciting horror games never to be released. The only me is me. <laughs> Are you sure the only you is you? The trailer was actually promoting PT, which stood for Playable Teaser. There's a word for those, Hideo. It's demo. PT was supposed to be an interactive reveal for Silent Hills, a Kojima collab with people Kojima wanted to hang out with, Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus. Silent Hills was subsequently cancelled because it would have been much too fantastic and it wouldn't have been fair on all the other games. So what we were left with was this L-shaped corridor, the most upsetting L-shape in video games since that one block in Tetris. <laughs> PT was an immediate success, and to accompany it, just a few days later at Tokyo Game Show, Kojima dropped what was described as a concept movie. There's a word for those, Hideo. It's trailer. The community promptly scoured this trailer for details. Details like this one-armed monster who chases you down the corridor and right into your nightmares. It seemed like a mercy at the time that this asymmetrically limbed monster didn't appear in PT itself. Or did it? because in perhaps the best hidden easter egg on this list, the creature does indeed exist within PT, but only in the game's files, as discovered by Kojima-obsessed data miners who made the horrifying discovery when going through PT's code with a fine tooth comb. So we were never safe, it was always here, just out of view, watching, waiting, like Hideo Kojima if you're Norman Reedus. Their mission is to assess the nature of the threat. Our job is to keep them alive. Do not engage the enemy. Remember that we are not dealing with ordinary bad guys. Team 1 will move in from the southwest. Team 2 will approach from the north. 
Once our recon is complete, we'll rendezvous and wait for further orders. Anyone familiar with the cinematic oeuvre of Colin Farrell will know how a SWAT team operates. Creep into a location, do some cool hand gestures at each other, some synchronised door kicking, shoot some surprised bad guys, say something cool like neutralised, and then leave in a big van. Nowhere in that very well-defined SWAT operator job description does it mention being chased by supernatural little girls, which is why Alma's appearance in 2005 shooter Fear feels like such a curveball. Still, after the first couple of times she pops up to completely undermine your authority, you get a feel for the rhythms of the game. The lights start flickering, the music goes a bit ominous, and you prepare for this tactical shooter to turn into the ring for a bit. I'm not closing my eyes, you're closing your eyes. Are you? What makes the Easter egg in Fear's opening level particularly unsettling then is that there's absolutely no foreshadowing of the scare that's about to happen. You find a set of double doors, just like the 400 other ones in this office building. You press use on them because those are the rules and nothing happens. So you press use on them again and then again. I don't know whether ramping up tension has a direct opposite, but if it does, it's probably the sight of someone trying and failing to open a door 40 times. Then, without warning, the doors open, and you immediately wish they hadn't. Alma appears, stands there being scary for long enough for you to shoot at her, and realise guns don't harm her. Then, she disappears again into the ether. Whew, scary. It's a good job there are no more doors in this game, otherwise that'd do a real number on you. If 2012 horror game Cry of Fear has only one message to impart to us, and it does, it's this. Don't help anyone, ever. In the intro, you're hit by a car while tending to an injured man in the street. And when you wake up and begin to explore the gloomy Stockholm streets around you, you discover that the accident must have affected the part of your brain that's in charge of melty face nightmare person perception. Experts believe that's also the area where many of our shrieking receptors are. So after being hit by a car and then beset with, best case scenario, a bunch of horrifying hallucinations of monsters trying to murder you, calling 911 on your phone is a pretty reasonable reaction. I'm going to need the police, the fire brigade, two ambulances, and if they can get here, the coast guard. So you do exactly that. You dial in the three digits that usually precede a calm operator telling you everything's going to be okay and that people are on the way to help, and you get this. So, can I assume the Coast Guard's not going to make it? Is anyone in this room? Can you give me a sign? Over the course of a round of co-op ghost hunting sim phasmophobia, you're exposed to a wide variety of upsetting sounds. Creaky floorboards, whistling wind, the pitch of an EMF reader increasing when you step somewhere slightly more haunted, one of your friends shouting ghost nonsense in your ears at increasing volume. Oh, it's, it didn't like oh, that. it's hunting. It's hunting. Didn't like that. Didn't like that. I can see it. I can see it. Run, right, I'm, run, I'm running. Run, I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. Unrelated, but anyone looking for a new ghost hunter to join their phasmophobia squad? The scariest sound of all, though, is hearing a ghost speak to you. You can't make out what they're saying specifically because they're saying it backwards. But think of it this way: When has anyone said anything nice to you while speaking in reverse? When unreversed, this ghostly whispering sounds pretty mundane. <laughs> That is, before the mind-shattering revelation that these are lines from the 2007 animated Jerry Seinfeld starring B-based comedy film, B-Movie. Presumably this ghost died with unfinished business? And that business was watching B-Movie? Sometimes life interrupts your game and you have to leave it unattended for a few minutes. If you're watching this UPS, what do you do with all those photos of me standing in my doorway in my pyjamas holding stuff? Mm. Are you 
Fatal Frame 2 capitalizes on this moment of vulnerability with an easter egg that's basically guaranteed to spill the cup of tea you're walking back into the room with. To find this secret, all you need to do is leave the controller idle for a few minutes at any point in the game. Work smarter, not harder, PT data miners. At a certain point, this unwelcome screensaver of a ghoulish face appears on screen, smirking at the funny joke they're pulling on you as if freaking you out counts as top tier comedy in the world of Fatal Frame. Although to be fair, I used to smirk just as hard when I changed the screensavers on the school computers to say bum. If you didn't want them to be changed every single IT lesson, Mr. Kemp, you should have just let us play Counter-Strike at lunchtime like we asked. Usually, the only supernatural thing about the Hitman games are 47's powers of disguise. It's basically uncanny how he can pop on a Hawaiian shirt and a trilby and convince people he's the drummer in New York's hottest indie band. But things get spookier still in Hitman contracts. The game is macabre, yes, there's really no cheery way to kill a crime lord at a fetish party held in a slaughterhouse, but the grisly goings-on are at least grounded in reality. This is the seedy underbelly of society you're skulking around, not a Tim Burton film. Which is precisely what makes this secret in the Traditions of the Trade mission so scary. To find it, you need to access the closed wing of the thermal spa by stealing the master key or picking the lock. Once inside, look in any of the mirrors and the ghost of an angry bald man will appear in the reflection, as if he's standing behind you. So either ghosts are real in the Hitman universe, in which case 47 can consider himself extremely haunted, on account of all the people he's nudged into winemaking equipment. Or he's hallucinating, which is also plausible given that he was raised in a lab with his 80 identical brothers and spent his whole life feeding people rat poison and stuffing them into wardrobes. I mean, that's bound to leave you with some stuff to work through. I hear drumming's good for that. Yeah! Phew, we made it, folks. Well done, all of you who got this far. As a treat, we've just got more videos. Hey, more videos. Up here, something yeah, a little more genteel, a little more friendly, something, you know, palate cleanser from us. And down here, something equally sweet and probably more wholesome uh, from Outside Extra, our sister channel. So enjoy those, and we'll see you next time.